Hello students, welcome to EPG Pachala. This is Professor Vinti Davar from Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra, Haryana. Today we are going to talk on the module Travel Catering from the paper Food Service Management. Dear students, travel catering, that is road, rail, air and sea, has a number of characteristics not commonly associated with other food and beverage outlets. It frequently involves the feeding of a large number of customers arriving together at a catering facility or who need to be catered in a specific time, for example, on board a plane or train. The plane or the train only carries sufficient food and beverage supplies for a specific number of meal periods. If for any reason this food cannot be served to customers, alternative supplies may not be readily available. The service of the food and beverages may be particularly difficult due to the physical conditions within this service area for example, turbulence on board a plane. The types of restaurants described previously are usually catering for a specific and identifiable socioeconomic market. Travel catering often has to cater for mixed markets. Finally, there are the problems of staffing, these food and beverage facilities, the extra costs involved in the transportation and service of the food and beverages, space restrictions and the problem of security while the operation is in transit. To count on the main objectives of this module, this module will surely enable you to understand different types of travel catering, that is concept of air catering, details of rail catering, nuances of ship or cruise catering, and description of road catering. Now we'll discuss different types of catering. There are four main types of travel catering which have been identified. Airline catering, cruise ship and ferry boat catering, railway catering, and motorway catering. The airline catering or the airline meal, commonly known as in-flight meal, is the one served to passengers on board a plane. The meals are prepared and transported to the plane by airline caterers such as Taj Set and Skybase, etc. These meals vary widely in quality and quantity across various airline companies and traveling class. A particular airline may only serve water or beverages, sandwiches or snacks, whereas another may serve seven course gourmet in long haul first class meals. Sometimes the quality of airline service is assessed on the basis of quality of meal served. The employees and the passengers on board are catered by the flight catering units, whereas airport restaurants cater to the needs of large variety of guests, such as passengers, relatives of passengers, employee and staff, etc. This includes not only the passengers and employees, but also the food and beverage outlets situated at the airports. Airline catering has gone tremendous change in terms of organization, operations, service, and variety in menus. Airlines have tried to different experiments to alleviate the widely held customer perception that airline food is bland. Now, the food also includes, along with continental food, oriental food. Indian cuisine in itself is very very popular. Dishes from Mughal area, 
Mughlai chicken, Mughlai biryanis are once again very popular. Some airlines have tried introducing high street brands in their food packaging. Originally, those consisted only of sandwiches and flasks of tea, coffee, alcoholic beverages. But today, the progress has led to full and varied service, which has paralleled that of aircraft development itself. In budget airlines, however, the product has gone back to the basic trolley with sandwiches, snacks, chocolate, and limited selection of beverages on offer. Quite often, the quality of the food is used in their marketing campaign as a unique selling point, and airlines will employ a well-known chef to design and prepare their menus as part of their marketing efforts. The chefs who are known worldwide are employed to prepare the menu listings and they train the staff who will cook the similar kind of food. Especially, North American airline industry was more advanced than air different airlines. They were the first ones to bring the concept of ground kitchens for production of their food. The ground kitchens are especially helpful in managing operations when there are several hundred flights of an airline with thousands of passengers. The food is prepared, portioned and plated in these kitchens at the ground which helps in saving money for airlines. This also helps in quality and cost controlling. Waste of food is also very manageable. To discuss the product and service styles, the airline catering falls into two main areas, the terminal catering and in-transit or in-flight catering. Terminal catering and in-flight catering are two different things. The in-flight catering service varies considerably with the class of travel, type and duration of flight. For the economic class travelers, the food and beverage portions are highly standardized with the meals portion into plastic trays that are presented to the passengers and from which they eat their meals. Disposable cutlery, napkins may be used to increase the standard of hygiene and reduce the weight of the courier and storage space required. Gourmet food in the airlines is another recent trend. To ensure a gourmet brand in their menu, Airlines are hiring celebrity chefs such as Guy Martin of Paris, three-star Lee Grand Vifour Hotel working for Air France, and Christian Piss of Vienna's restaurant Palais Coburg working for Australian Airlines, Stephen Piles of the Dallas restaurant working with American Airlines, whilst Charlotte Trotter the Chicago-based celebrity chef in the United States. If we look at the flight catering system, the customers are the first to be catered to, and then the catering is ordered and the delivery of materials is made. After this all is done on ground, the assembly or the production unit works there. They cook and produce the food transport it to the courier, which is uplifted and there is onboard storage provided where the food trolleys are stored and when the flight takes off, after that the service is made to each passenger. Once the plane lands, the offloading and wash up is done. Meals are prepared 12 to 16 hours in advance, chilled and then held at low temperatures. Service is from a Guridon trolley where food is portioned in front of the customers and any garnishes, sauces, etc. are added according to their immediate requirements. 
the crockery used may be bone china and this combines with fine glassware and cutlery to create an atmosphere of high class dining some airlines offer full silver service menu for their first class and business travels a characteristic of airline catering is that this service is often contracted out to a specialist catering firm which will supply a similar service to many airlines the meal is usually included in the price of the fare with the exception of budget airlines the growth in air travel has made competition fierce and the area of food service is now a particularly competitive aspect of the total service offered by any airline the next point which we need to discuss is the stuffing food and beverage outlets at air terminals usually consists of self service and waiter service restaurants supplemented by vending machines and licensed bars the major restaurant brands often seen in high streets can also be seen in airport terminals in flight catering service is delivered by the flight attendants who often see the service of food and drinks as secondary to their responsibility of ensuring the health and safety of passengers this can be especially true if passengers are flying in the economy class although health and safety should always remain flight attendants prime responsibility and airlines that wish to claim a competitive advantage over the train and offer incentives to individuals that offer exceptional service next we would talk about the technology the main issues with aircraft are that of space and weight ensuring that on board ovens are lighter take less space and consume less energy are primary concerns advancements in technology may mean that airlines may be able to offer a menu fully cooked on board on the day wifi is widely available on airports this added service may have an effect on the average food and beverage expenditure of customers coming over to railway catering in india indian railways catering and tourism corporation which is a subsidiary of indian railways is responsible for providing meals to the passengers of indian railways unlike ferry and in flight catering rail catering is showing an upward trend in revenue generated it caters to the needs of railway passengers both in rails and on railway stations the food and beverage items offered in the train depend on the type of train and the fare charge both vegetarian and non vegetarian meals are served at very reasonable rates irctc is responsible for serving snacks tea soft drinks ice creams breakfast lunch and dinner in the trains in india the food is served in individual trays with pre-portioned dishes there are so many trains which are very popular among public because they serve food on the way to name a few rajdhani and shatabdi express are very very popular as soon as the passengers are seated and the train starts the passengers are served a bottle water the bottled water is again prepared by irctc itself and then according to the time right from the morning till night food is served the passengers are served bread tea along with biscuits or cookies then they are served the breakfast in which they get choice they can ask for non vegetarian which is omelet and bread or they can ask for vegetarian in which they serve usually they serve cutlets along with bread 
jam, butter, a juice, and then accompanied by tea and coffee. The lunch has a specific menu in which they serve rice, roti, dal, vegetable, salad, and then a sweet dish is given. In the evening tea, again, snacks along with juice accompanied by tea and coffee is served at the dinner time before dinner. Around at 7, passengers are served soups, variation of soups. And then the dinner is served, which again consists of almost the same but different dishes as lunch. And after that, a sweet dish is again served before the passengers retire for the night. The dishes are prepared in central kitchens, which are located in major railway junctions. The serving trays are reusable, whereas use and throw spoons, forks, and plates are offered or the pre-portioned trays are used, which are heat sealed with a plastic cover. This has created major problems in terms of waste generation. Some luxury trains offer very high class food and service. In these trains, fine quality crockery and cutlery items are used for service, formal and highly individual service, which is offered to the guests at a very high price. Trains like Maharaja Express and Palace on Wheels are the two to be mentioned and the main clientels are the foreign tourists visiting India. To explore the financial implications, with a 4.2% increase in rail catering revenue, the sector appears very lucrative. The main products purchased are hot beverages and snacks, so the focus is in the reduction of costs to ensure higher profit margins. Spend per, per, per person increases as the length of journey increases. However, some companies offer all inclusive ticket prices, which help raise the food and beverage revenue generated. To know about the marketing of the food, the provision of food and beverage in rails is often used as a promotional tool. Ticket inclusive packages are often advertised in an effort to entice customers away from low cost airlines. The sector is not as aggressive as it could be with its promotional efforts on food and beverage sales. The majority of train companies advertise their services in their in-house magazines, whilst some have an e-marketing campaign and also use local and international media advertising. This medium is not very popular in India. The next point to discuss is product and service styles. Rail catering may be conveniently divided into two main areas, the terminal catering and in-transit catering. The terminal catering refers to different types of catering services found in railway stations and on platforms. The Comsum restaurant set up by the IRCTC, the vegetarian and non-vegetarian refreshment halls, Kiosks on platforms are all included in this segment. Catering at railway terminals usually comprises licensed bars, self-service and waiter service restaurants, fast foods, takeaway units, supplemented by vending machines, dispensing hot and cold foods and beverages. In transit, catering can feature three kinds of service. The first is the traditional restaurant car service, where breakfast, lunch, and dinner are organized in sittings. Passengers go to the restaurant car, where appropriate seating accommodation is provided, and then return to their seats on the train after their meal. In a pullman service, these meals are delivered directly to the seat of first-class passengers only. Again, it is known as in-situ service. 
The second type of service is the buffet car, which is a self-service operation where the passengers go to the car, buy light refreshments over the counter, and they may sit there or bring the food to their seats and eat. The third is the trolley service, where snacks and drinks are delivered to customers at their seats. Innovative approaches to catering on trains are also an evidence, such as the operation of Cuisine 2000, using cooked chilled foods prepared centrally, buffet cars turned into bistros on the London to Birmingham route, and on the East Coast Anglo-Scottish route, a taste of Scotland restaurant service. But in India, we are still lagging behind in adding a car to any train with specific taste food, such as Punjab taste, South Indian taste, or any such food. The next in line is the terminal catering. Catering at railway terminals usually comprises self-service and waiter service restaurants. Fast food and takeaway units supplemented by vending machines dispensing hot and cooled food and beverages are the main attractions. Whereas, in transit catering can feature three kinds of service. The first is the traditional restaurant car service where breakfast, lunch and dinner are again organized in seatings as passengers go to the restaurant car for service where appropriate seating accommodation is provided and then return to their seats. The next in line is the staffing. In India, the network rail is undertaking a project that looks to rejuvenate the provision of skills in the rail catering and other rail staff. In partnership with local colleges, the program aims to bring all staff to a national vocational qualification standard. Other similar initiatives have been introduced all over the UK, ensuring that rail employees are well trained. Once again, as I said previously, in India, we are lacking on this point. And we can also introduce training our employees who can bring good name to railways. The next is technology. The future of the Indian Railways catering services in particular depends on e-catering. The concept of e-catering facilitates the online ordering of dishes from famous food and beverage outlets from where a particular train will pass. These passengers will be delivered their favorite dishes inside the train by the outlet and the money may be paid via internet or Cash on delivery can also be made. However, till now, quality of the food has been very debatable. This needs to be addressed immediately. There have been a number of advancements in railway kitchen design and technology, enabling operators to serve more complicated menus than ever before. Also, the same benefits enjoyed by the other sectors with advancement of EPOs and beverage dispensing technologies are enjoyed by the rail sector. So let us discuss the cruise or the ship catering. The cruise or ship sector is one of the fastest moving sectors in the hospitality industry. Budget or no frills cruise liners are making an appearance with new companies such as Caspi Cruises, Easy Cruise, whilst older budget companies such as Thomson or Lewis Cruise Lines increase their fleet capacity. On the other hand, ferry boat catering has slumped as the numbers of ferry travellers has dramatically decreased due to the increase of, increase of low-cost airlines. The main aim of this type of catering is to fulfil food and beverage requirements of cruise passengers and staff members 
of cruise and cargo ships. The cruise ships may have a number of restaurants offering a large variety in terms of cuisines offered, whereas the facilities on a cargo ship may be very limited. The service offered may be very lavish and room service and alcoholic bars are also provided on high class cruise ships. The financial implications of cruise ship catering promises growth. Ferry boat catering is extremely competitive. Mintel is forecasting a downward trend continuing well into 2010. Traditional cruise aligners are looking to be more innovative, continuing with all inclusive packages, but offering optional extras. Wedding and honeymoon packages are another two products often offered by cruise liners. When we talk about the marketing strategies of the cruise liners, they are expanding their marketing strategies to target non-traditional market segments. Increasing competition in the budget sector forces them to think innovatively in finding ways to sell their product without conflicting the more traditional brands. Special promotions, discounts during low season, special occasions, anniversary, gifts to customers are some of the promotional tools which are used by most liners. The product and service styles, if we discuss this point, sea or marine catering varies from the provision of food and beverages on the short sea route ferries to the large crews or passenger liners where the catering facilities are an important part of the service offered by the shipping line. These are usually included in the price of the fare. On the cruise liners, the standard of catering facilities is high because they are an important sales feature in a competitive activity. On the short sea routes, however, price is usually a more important factor and because of the necessity to feed large numbers of people in a short time, the catering service provided is usually of the popular and fast food type. In the cruise liner, companies appear to be more innovative than ever with companies such as Princess Cruises serving dinner in customer cabins or sweet balconies ensuring extra food and beverage income. The gourmet bug is also appearing in the cruise sector with celebrity chefs such as Todd English on Queen Mary II, Nobu Motista and Wolfgang Puck on Crystal, Marco Pierre White on the new PNO Ventura, Gary Rhodes on two PNO ships, Oriana and Arcadia. Service styles can range depending on cruise liner from full silver service to self service and buffet. With ferry boats, the service style often is cafeteria or takeaway due to the short journeys involved. When we talk about staffing, after casino sales, one of the largest revenue generators in cruise liners is beverage sales. Staff is trained extensively in upselling techniques and with traditional cruise liners, the recruitment process ensures that some of the best staff are hired. With the added incentive of tax-free incomes, many hospitality professionals consider a few months on a cruise liner. The organization on cruise ships can be extremely hierarchical. Most frontline employees tend to stay for only a few trips as the nature of the ship means that there is not much to do but work whilst on a cruise ship. The technology in the rail catering is advanced EPOS technology and bar dispensing equipment mean better control of sales, stock control and wastage ensuring better profit margins as well as 
the facilitation of special discounts. Advancement in waste disposal technology ensures waste is better compacted, shredded, and incinerated. When we talk at length about roads or motorcycle catering, the road catering has progressed from the inns and taverns of earlier days used by those traveling on foot and horseback to the present day motorway service areas, in short we call MSAs and other roadside catering outlets. High street fast food operations are also now appearing both on motorway service areas and as free stranding drive throughs Basically, it includes the establishments offering food and beverage items alongside the highways and other roads. The product and service styles used in road catering are provide a valuable catering service to the traveling public and their food and beverage facilities usually include better service or self-service restaurants, vending machines and takeaway foods and beverages. To elaborate upon their marketing, MSA's main marketing tool are the road signs. The main motive for consumers stopping at such a facility is that of convenience. Advertising is heavily regulated and often operators may not be allowed to use their own brand in motorway signage. To talk about the staffing in these establishments, the service areas are often open 24 hours a day and have a particular problem of staffing as some employees have to be brought from their place of residence to work and then they have to be left again back to their residence after work over a distance of 20 to 30, 40 miles. Also, because of their isolated locations, the hours they are open and the sheer volume of numbers involved at peak periods, these service areas are also particularly prone to vandalism and lettering. To summarize the whole travel management, we have different media of traveling. The modes used can be air, by air we travel by planes. On the water, we travel in ships and crews. We travel on rails by trains. And we also travel by road using the motor cars, the buses. In each traveling mode, we provide food in one or the other way, on board as well as on the stations. So we need to manage the food at each junction on board in the excellent manner to grow in the food service management industry. Thank you very much. I hope this is very fruitful for you. God bless you and study hard to learn better. God bless. Thank you so much.